The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. Yeah, Earnestly Speaking Podcast. Let's get it. I'm a giant in New York, in Miami, carry heat. So much more in store, my product can flood the street. Opinion Nation, Godfather, CEO. Puff in the late 90s, gon' see me blow. Oh, got my hustle on, no imitation of that. Army of untouchables, Opinion Nation staff. Never an off season, homie. Check the numbers. Heart drop in my own right, supply and southern comfort. Earnestly speaking, my ego is well fed. Earnestly speaking, you're too feeble. And no threat. See him like a hurricane. You're a mild breeze. Earnestly speaking, leaving Eli a dynasty. Shame. Earnestly podcast coming to you November 29th, 2023. It is our usual Wednesday soiree. It's always a nice soiree with my man, Zach the Degenerate. Zachary, nice, nice specs there, buddy. Number one. Number two, how was your Thanksgiving? You know, it was a little more uh, relaxing. Really? I only worked in the afternoon. I, I fell asleep in the middle of the second second game. <laughs> I slept like a baby to like the uh, fourth quarter of the third game. And that's your game too, the second game for the record. Yeah. Well, go to work at seven, come home around five, take a shower, you're like, you just want to take take a little nap, just to, just during a commercial. You're like, let me just close my eyes during a commercial, and boom, <laughs> you're out. Anyway, uh, last week we tied again. We both got ten wins. So, it was a good. It was, it was a pretty easy week. Yeah, it was pretty easy, and I think this week might be kind of the same vibe a little bit. We'll see. Uh, I don't know how, how we'll pick how we'll go, but these games seem to be semi for the most part. Like easy to, to see where we're gonna go, but um yeah we did tie last week um so this week we'll do some little different little wrinkle to the to the best bets obviously well obviously to to us because we we know that the listeners don't know that in addition to the to, to the best bets for the NFL we're also gonna add five more games the five games the the five games of meaning that impact the playoff the, the college football playoff uh that, that we'll know on Sunday uh, we'll add that to the list of the list of uh games this week so we're gonna have do the usual best bets, uh, the usual NFL games here on the list, and then plus five, and we'll add that to the totals this week and see where we, where we land. Obviously, Pac-12, Big 12, SEC, ACC, and Big 10 games all have impact with the playoff, which I'm pretty excited about, to be honest with you. We'll get to the FSU minute in a second, because so uh, obviously you and I are big FSU fans, and we're one game away from possibly getting the playoff, um, so it should be fun times. Um, before we get started, also on the back end of the show, we're going we're to have a Another topic that you brought up last last week that you want to talk about that you heard on another podcast, which we'll bring up in a second, um, concerning I, I think it was JJ Reddick's podcast actually, where yes. him and Tim Legler and I think Richard Jefferson were talking about um, players, depending on where you have them listed on the all-time rankings, that could be entering the top 15 conversation all-time by the end of this year. Well, obviously, I have some opinions on that one as well. That's really a nice little debate we're going to have there. But first, let's get to the uh, first game, and that's, called, of course, tomorrow night as, as a recording. Recording was a night, of course. We have a pretty big game here, actually. The Seattle Seahawks heading to Dallas to face the Cowboys. The Cowboys are 9.5 point favorites. The over-under is 47. So, Seattle's um, eh, kind of a little uh, slump right now. You know? They they did let me down a little bit last week. I I had a little hope for them against San Fran, but uh, I guess maybe it was a one year fluke with uh, Geno Smith. I guess it was He's just average. Yeah, I, it would surprise me that I mean, look, I don't think they have the draft pick, the draft position to 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 get a great top, a top quarterback. But it would well, surprise I think me. They they, will. I think I think they'll still go after a quarterback if, if possible. I don't think Geno's long term solution, honestly. And this, and this is what I feared actually. Um, at the end of last year, and look, the contract they have with him is not not, not a bad contract. It's only a three year deal. 
You know, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure where the opt-out clause is on that. You know, after like, you know, is it is it fully guaranteed three years? Is it after one, two years, and get out of the contract? I don't know. But Gino isn't the answer long term. He is a good stopgap to have. He could, he got honestly he got paid for what he did last year. Honestly, so um, the Cowboys in the meantime, um, you know, this is the stretch. This is the stretch of games now where look they they feast on some on really bad teams, including yours, um, uh, and and mine. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, remember they beat my team eight nine seventeen in two games. So, um, but this is where the Cowboys. Are, we're we're going to know more about the Cowboys in these next couple weeks because they they play Seattle this week. They play Detroit a couple weeks after that. Eagles again, um, so they got a, they got they a nice little tough schedule going coming up in, in in the weeks to come. That being said, Dallas wins this game, and they will win comfortably, I think. But nine and a half points, a lot of points, short week too, especially. I'm going to take Seattle the points here as a late a late late cover. Let's give me Seattle the points here. What you got? I want to do the exact same. I really do, because I don't want to believe it was a one year fluke. I love the offensive weapons they have there in Seattle. But, and I also kind of always expect Dallas to screw up. But I feel more confident in an over in the game overall. Over. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Next game here, we have the Indianapolis Colts heading to Tennessee to face the Titans. The Colts, who right now in the playoffs are today, they be in the playoffs. A seven seed, they are one point favorites. The over under forty three points. Wow, who would have thought the Colts, even without Anthony Richardson, would still be in this spot? This is this is actually we're talking about coaching your candidates. I mean, Steichen has to be in the conversation now at this point. Well, here's a question: Do you would could you imagine the Colts being in this position if Anthony Richardson was playing every game and playing every snap of every game? I, I would have imagined that even before, whether or not he was there or not. But you're saying you're saying that he might have hurt them more by being there because he's a rookie and make make mistakes and all that cost him a couple of games. Uh, absolutely. I think uh, that's credit Gardner Minshew. He know. was the he was he had the most raw talent. Mm-hmm. He I I think he played 13 total games in his entire collegiate career. Mm-hmm. So. And, and when he was doing that, he completed barely 50% of his passes. Right. What he had was all the talent. Whereas now you have Gardner Minshew. He's been around the block, what, three, four years on three, four different teams? He's got a little experience. He, he knows how to read a defense by now. True, true. true. Good point. And he was pretty good that rookie season. Even though the Jags sucked overall, he was pretty good. So you like this game? I I like Gardner Minshew, buddy. You going Indy? Hell yeah. He's driving on the school bus with the victory. I do like Indy, but I feel like the safer bet's the over. Where's no. the safer bet? Maybe. What was the number? Uh, 43. It's low enough to at least get you to... 24-20. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I can see that situation. AFC South, you know, you know, one of those things. It's in Tennessee, too. Also, this has a trappish game to it, a little bit, feel to it. Because this is Mike Vrabel, that team. Mike Vrabel teams do play hard, even though they suck. So I'm going to sure. go over this one, though. All right, next one, we have the L.A. Chargers heading to New England to face the Patriots. The Chargers are six-point favorites. The over-under is 40 and a half. So TikTok time for uh, one Brandon Staley, because he'll be done after the end of this year, you, you would think. I mean, this is this is bad. And yeah, you, what... there's no money to worry about at this point. So I really can't believe he's surviving now. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you fire him just with the hope of turning around the season in time to make the playoffs? Mm-hmm. Waste of time of Herbert's career right now. Wasting of Herbert's career. Really, honestly. But this is the one team in the AFC, AFC wildcard spot. That if they ran off like five next six games and get back in the playoff race, wouldn't surprise me because because of Herbert and their talent. But I'll I'll, I'll take the Chargers here. Cover six points. Pat, Pat's packed it in. They're done. Pat's packed it in. This team is done. Oh, heck yeah. They're trying to tank so hard to get the number one pick. They don't want to risk anyone trading in front of them, a la the Jets, a division rival who re- sees the writing on the wall now. But uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I'm right. I'm right there with you. You going Chargers? Absolutely. My yeah. only thought is, I'm starting to get the feel of a whole repeat of 15 years of Philip Rivers there. Like great arm talent, great quarterback, just can't win. There's always little things that end up costing them game after game. Mm-hmm. All right, next one we have the Detroit Lions heading to New Orleans to face the Saints. The Lions four point favorites, the over under forty six and a half. That was a disappointing loss last week against Green Bay. Look, I had I had Green Bay on the points on the pick on our picks, so it didn't surprise me that Green Bay being that game. But the fact that Green Bay controlled that game from start to finish. Yes, I I never would have expected that. I mean, yeah. and quite has kept it back in the playoff race now. The only game behind Minnesota. Jordan Love's also trying to save his, save his career. He's playing well. Great. Yeah. Best game of his career last week by far. And on, on that, and I'll tell you what. I, I think they play Minnesota twice the next couple weeks too also. But anyway, that's that's Green Bay. We'll talk about them later. Um, the, the New Orleans, look, this AFC South is like a race at the bottom. <laughs> you have Atlanta is right now tied. It's technically the leading right now with a tie with the Saints at five and six. It's like whatever. Um, but the Saints have all these games. They, 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 they're a weird team. Like they'll have a that they have that game like I had last week against uh, Atlanta. Shit the bed, and then when you just when you write them off, they'll bounce back and shock you. I, I, I can see winning this game, but I ain't doing that. I'm betting you over in this one. Ooh, and the one thing I still feel like if the Saints are going to be competitive in a game, is their defense is going to show up. So I like the under. Oh, we're going opposite. Yes. <coughs> well, we shall see. Saints have they've had some games this year where they scored thirty plus. Yes. Yeah. No. No. They look good at times, but I, maybe I'm living in the past. Yeah, I think you're still thinking Derek Carr is Drew Brees. I guess. Yeah. Right? <laughs> All right. Next one we have the Atlanta Falcons heading to New York to face the Jets. The first place Falcons in the South are two and a half point favorites. The over under is thirty four. Did you hear news by Aaron Rodgers? He uh, he's he's been cleared to practice. Then you know what I call bullshit on there being an Achilles tear. Oh, you think it's it's fake? If he's cleared for action as an NFL quarterback for dropbacks that quickly, I call bullshit. Who you liking this one? I like the Jets. You know what? I do too. I feel like the defense is, will have a chance at winning this game to, to begin with. So I, I do too, but I'm gonna take the under in this game. Even at 34. Atlanta could barely score. The Jets, Tim Boyles, like come on. Middle like, goals. Yeah, give me, give me, give me a 17-13, you know, something like that. That's good enough for me. That, that gets me under. <laughs> so I like the under this one. All right. Next one. Arizona Cardinals and the Pittsburgh face the Steelers. Steelers five and a half point favorites over under 41 points. How are the, how are the Steelers seven and three? How? Absolute freaking luck. Teams never put them away early. They can't move the football for an entire half most of the time, and yet nobody puts them away because they've got the best player in the last four to five years and mm-hmm. T.J. Watt. I mean, again, you're talking about coach of the year candidates? Mike Tomlin has got to be in the conversation right now. You mean uh, Mike Epps? Mike Epps. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and the thing is, the seven and three, Right now, the five seed, and this is, this is the thing also, too. The five, they're, they're the five seed, which I actually predicted they'll be before they get started, but it's the way they're doing it. It's kind of shocking. Yeah, and, boy, that probably sucks. And I'm going to bring up, the, if you look at the screen right now, I'm going to bring up the schedule in a second. Um, give me one quick second. There it goes right there. Here's their schedule right now. Um, The next six games to, to close out the year. I don't know if you can see that. Um, But uh, they yeah. play, obviously, Arizona, we're talking about now. The Patriots next week, the Colts, 
on the road, the Bengals without Joe Burrow, and then the Seahawks, who may not even need that game, and then uh, the Ravens, which that, may, that game might not even matter. So they may fall into 11 wins this year. Well, I actually think that last game of the season might matter for who wins the division, the way it's running right now. So, but yeah, I mean, the stars are aligning for another, what, maybe 11, 12 and 5 Steelers team, even 11 and 6. And then, know what happens? They lose first round. Yeah, but not, I don't think they're going to win more, more than a, if they even win a, 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 a wild card game, that, that'd be amazing. I think my, I know I, I had the winning 11 games when you started, but it's the way they're getting here. Because Pick hasn't been good, and it, that was with Matt Canada sticking up the joint. Now he's gone now, and yeah. go figure. Yesterday, yes, uh, last week was the first game over 400 yards in what two years? Yeah, that that that. But you know what? A lot of times that happens when a bunch of players mm-hmm. finally get that pressure off because of one coach. They come out and shine. Now, what so, happens this coming week? That's different. Anyway, I got picked to cover this game. They're at home. Defense will, will, will stymie Colin Murray. So give me Pittsburgh five and a half points. Yeah. Give me Pittsburgh's defense for a couple turnovers, even. Yeah. I, I'll take Pittsburgh. Yeah. All right. It's your game. The Miami Dolphins and the Washington face the Commanders. Dolphins nine and a half point favorites over under 49 and a half. So Dolphins eight and three. Uh, Commanders quit. They, they've quit also, too. That's another team that's quit. <laughs> Not on offense. Yeah, Sam Howells. Look, I think he's the only guy at this point now that's, that's going to be guaranteed back to this team next year. The way he's playing. Oh, yeah. I mean, the front office has to realize if you're the GM, you're gone. Mm-hmm. The head coach, you're gone. I would bet, be willing to bet we trade Scary Terry even during the offseason for a draft pick. McLaren? Yeah. Yeah, might as well. If you could get a second rounder, I think that might be a steal. This is this is the one team in the NFL I think that's going to be ripe, not just because how mediocre they've been for years and now they're just t- falling apart now, but because of the new ownership group and Josh Harris and Matt Johnson being the face of that ownership group, they they they, they already have a desire to clean house anyway. You're going to see a complete overhaul of this franchise now. Because remember, they took over the team pretty late in the in the proceedings where like. I think in July, August, they took over the ownership, so they couldn't even do anything. They couldn't even impact free agency or you know on a draft because they weren't there. Now, with this team being running around now, it's ripe for the, for this for a massive overhaul, and they're gonna do it. I agree. Right. I I, I believe Eric Bieniemy is gonna become the head coach personally. Right. I mean, yeah, I think so too. Also, I I, I, I call that fucking before you even started. So, uh, game Miami covered this game. You know, I would love – screw it. I'm going to be a homer and take the over. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to be a guy who just picks picks the opponent to beat the crap out of me. I'm just going to take the <laughs> over. So but you'll see a lot of scoring there, a little Tyreek Hill MVP uh, conversations continue. Speaking of Tyreek Hill, did you hear his comments uh, today? Or what was it? I think it was yesterday? No. What were they? I'm gonna play you a clip. What he said about the the Super Bowl chances, and he compared this team to the to the Chiefs team that he won a Super Bowl with a couple of years ago. Listen to the clip. Tyreek, do you think you can go all the way? All the way to the Super Bowl? Yeah, oh, of course, man. Um, we got the we got the perfect team to do it. I won a Super Bowl, and I feel like this is probably the the better team oh, okay. than when we won a Super Bowl back when I was on KC. Look. Really, Tyree? Come on. Uh, you, only, you only had the greatest quarterback of all time, probably. Arguably, the greatest quarterback of all time on your roster. You only had the only greatest co- tight ends of all time on your roster. Like, really? Like, I get like one of probably two on the company, and I get that. But come on, man. Do you, Do you remember how close that first Super Bowl was for him? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, this is a guy who's pretty confident in the offense right now. Mm-hmm. And they do look better on defense than the Chiefs did that first go round. 
and I, I can now. understand that feeling. Right. You know, he, he's talking about how he felt in the moment, not looking back on one one player. I will say this much though. Remember when he first got to Miami, he was like, you know, T- Tua is just as good as, T- as uh, Mahomes. He feels good. The chemistry to him and Tua, and we all laughed at him saying, "What the fuck are you talking about, it's Mahomes?" But then he's doing what he's doing the last two years. Yeah, he was like, right about their chemistry. He he's not wrong about that. I mean, the fact that he's like, okay, first off, if I, if I had a vote right now through thirteen weeks or well, twelve weeks rather, my MVP is Tyreek Kill. So the fact I'm saying that should tell you how I feel about that. So he wasn't wrong about that. But at the same time, like, like it, it, it's about Pat Mahomes, who's arguably the greatest of all time. Like, what are we doing here? Like, come on. Y- y- y'all, y'all haven't even beat a, beat a good team yet, either, on top of that. And look, I'm a Dolphins fan. I, w- I want to do well. You know, I want to win a Super Bowl this year. But the levels of this shit, man. Come on. So, anyway. Anyway, next game here. Darren Broncos and Houston face the Texans. Huge game here. Huge game. Texans, three and a half point favorites, over under 47 points. Texans almost did it last week. They almost did it. They almost did it. Almost. Oh, my God. Do you know the shit I would be talking today? Oh, to me? About my Just goat? in general about, you know, Jacksonville and the Texans and C.J. Stroud. Yeah. But. Oh, boy. Well, right now, Houston is currently not in the playoff right now. No, no, I'm sorry. Not that, maybe they are in the playoff right now. I, I got to check that make sure. I don't think so right now. No, I think both teams are out right now. I think it's, it's Cleveland. It's still Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and, uh, and um, Indy right now currently. But it's a huge game because both teams are right right behind uh, both, um, the seven seed. Um, nugget, uh, no, nuggets, no, Nuggets. I'm in basketball mode. The Broncos. <laughs> the Broncos. Red hot right now. Red hot. But... Four of the last five games were at home. Let's see if they can translate, translate this on the road now. That's what I want to see. Um, I'm a scared little bitch, so I'm gonna take the under in this game. I want to say a lot first. Like, can Sean McVay take a little bit of a, a shot at the Jets again? Like, it, was that not a fluke win? Now, the way in which the Broncos have been playing of late. I mean, that looks like an absolute fluke. But then, I still have all the hope in the world for C.J. Stroud. And I feel like being just outside takes a little pressure off, and they can shine a little better. So you're taking Houston? I'm, of course I'm taking Houston, buddy. They're my Cinderella this year, and I want to start to ride them. Dude, I mean they they're story of the year right now, man. Um and by the way, Denver talking about like the you know fluke games. If they miss the playoffs by a single game or by a tiebreaker, there are like literally three losses this year they can look at. Like, what the fuck did we do? Opening against the Raiders by one point. Week two against you guys, the commanders, blown that lead. And then the jet game you just mentioned. Yes, but Houston has one game they can look back at and go. Everybody else in the NFL beat the living crap out of this team, and we lost to them. And that was when they lost to Carol to, to the Panthers. And I want to bring up something about that now. Did Panthers? you see the interview with uh, David Tepper uh, discussing I- the draft pick and the firing of uh, Frank Wright? No, I didn't, I didn't see the interview post 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 mortem of Frank Wright's career in Carolina. Oh, I'm I'm gonna have to look for the link and send it to you. But he was kind of throwing his scouts under the bus, while also throwing the coach under the bus, because he's like, I, he's a professional and he he was good, and these are professional scouts and they're they know what they're doing, and so we were going on the right path and. Everything seemed like it's the right path, and maybe it wasn't the right path, but, you know, we chose this path, and we had to go on this path. So it made it sound like Frank Wright was the only person who did not want to draft Bryce Young. And because he didn't, they drafted Bryce Young, he was not coaching him the way he should have been. I'm looking up the the, the, the uh, article now. 
Yeah, I don't see anything here out of like out of step here. It uh, doesn't come off out of step, but when you watch the video, it's a whole different take. Oof. He's a meddler, dude. He's oh, meddler. absolutely. Seven coaches in seven years, six years, what it was? I think six. That's pathetic. Yeah, that's pathetic. The amount of money for just he's the in, last he's two coaches now. He must be pretty money. I mean, I know, I know the guy's worth, worth $20 million, but still, damn, dude. Yeah. Like, for real. He's probably of, made $4 billion this year. Speaking of Carolina, though, they play Tampa Bay this weekend. They're five, five and a half point dogs. Bucks five and a half point favorites over under 37 points. Just come on. Under. Like, I'll take under this game. Yeah, and I'm going to just take Tampa Bay. I think they're going to feel like they still have a chance to play for something. Well, only game back in the playoff, right? I mean, for the division, so, yeah. Yeah. So that's easy. All right, next one here. This is actually a sneaky big game. The Cleveland Browns send the LA face the Rams. Rams three and a half point favorites over under forty points. Man, I've, Cleveland if they miss the playoffs because the quarterback quarterback issues because their defense is carrying this fucking team. Oh, absolutely. Miles Garrett should get some, some MVP kind of consideration. I'm actually gonna win it, but he gets some consideration. Well, he, he might get one or two votes for top five. He's definitely he's definitely defensive player. Yeah, defensive player of the year right now. I don't know about that now. Main, main Bland in Dallas. Well, I mean, how can you not look at TJ Watt again? Oh yeah, I, I'll say him and TJ Watt, but one and two. Because you look at how bad Kenny Pickett has been all season, and you wonder how they're what eight and three, seven and start, three, seven and three. See, who's been, who's been, who's been worse though, Kenny Pickett or Deshaun Watson, or the or the curse out Brown court Brown quarterbacks? Who's been worse? They each only had one good game this season. Yeah. But at least Baker was mm-hmm. there. So. Taking the over. The Ram- Rams are sneaky back in his playoff race again now. A game behind Minnesota also. It's a huge game, both teams. Give me the Rams. Uh, give me over in this game, actually. Y'all. Give me the under in this game. I wanted to take, take the Browns, and I would have taken the Browns outright, but I actually like the under more. Okay. Okay. All right. Three more games. Game of the to me, this is game of the year. The Niners and the Philadelphia face the Eagles. Niners three point favorites over under forty seven and a half. Zach, how shocked are you that the Niners are, are three point favorites on the road? Oh, I'm I'm completely lost. I, I don't I don't understand the disrespect. You have one team who. They have not played a complete game all season. And what are they, 10-1? and one? Yep. Ha- that should not be happening. Watch it. Watch me this week. They played a complete game. Oh, they're gonna, if they play a complete game, ooh, that, that would be very scary. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it would be a pick them at best. Not going to understand, but a three-point favorite? What you're telling me is that San Fran is really a six point favorite in this game because they're the road team here. Because typically the home team gets three, gets a three point nudge. This is a six point swing here. I, and I think San Francisco, San Francisco still wins the game because they have full strength right now. Um, but I'm taking the over in this game. Yeah. When I when I see this game, I think this is a sh- one, one of the last ditch efforts for an MVP chance. So I'm going to take Philly. Mm-hmm. I'll take Philly to win. I would take Philly to win outright. So I'll take three and a half plus. Yeah, the, the gauntlet. If they win this game, you you, you realize the gauntlet they've gone through the last three weeks of KC, Buffalo, who's still, who's still a decent team, you know, six and six, and now San Francisco. The same. This is pretty impressive, and I hate the Eagles for the record. All right, Sunday football. Can't see Chiefs hitting the Green Bay for the Packers. Chiefs six point favorites over under forty two and a half. A big game for the Packers here. Big game here because again they're another team a game behind the wild card. All of a sudden playing good football. Jordan Love feeling himself a little bit. KC looks vulnerable, but at the same time they're also changing who they are. They're they're really a more defensive team. That can score when they want to. If receivers have to catch the ball, I can't take Casey to cover this game because I don't because I, I, I don't know what Green Bay team shows up. 
so the best to me, my best bet here is taking the over. What you got? Ernest, Ernest, Ernest. Yes, we have yeah, discussed yeah. this all season. Yeah. Kansas City does not cover a single goddamn game. That's season. why I'm not taking. That's, that's why I'm not doing on that. The over. Not on the over. You know what I'm taking? I'm taking Kansas City to win. I think they win big, actually. Really? This is my mortgage bet. I have not. Had Whoa, a really? Bet in weeks. Yeah, I know why. You mean, you mean? I love this game. Wow. Wow. That's a, that's a big bet there, buddy. Mortgage bet. Okay. And finally, Monday football. This would have been a huge game, but Joe Burrow's out for the year. The Bengals, while Joe Burrow go to Jacksonville, face the Jaguars. The Jags are eight and a half point favorites. The over under 38 points. Quite as kept though. Browning, the backup, has, has looked okay. He's looked okay. Yeah, he's going to look okay again because he's going to be playing against Sunshine. Jags defense is good though. Yeah, thank God it is. Yeah. They would not be in the playoffs right now if it's not for their, that defense. Yeah. I'm taking a slight over on this one though. I think, I think Browning can move the ball enough to make this a semi-competitive game. They, there's enough weapons on that team that... Cause look, he played well against the Steelers' defense last week. Arguably best defense in football. You don't know I mean to tell me yeah. that he can at least put up 20-some points on the board against the Jaguars' defense? I mean, why, why, why couldn't he? I, I got one question. Go ahead. Is Jamar Chase playing? Is he hurt? I'm asking you. I think he's still playing. Let me make sure I look it up real quick. In the meantime, what you got in this game? I got you over. This is the side my my pick right here. Okay. Let's look it up right now. Jamar Chase. Let's see. Jamar Chase is... There's no news on him being hurt. Excellent. Um, If Jamar Chase plays, I'm taking the Bengals, baby. Give me the points. As long as that man is on the field, the Bengals have a chance. Yeah, he's uh, there's no, yeah, he's he's cleared. No, no, this is old. This is old. Yeah, but there's, there's no, there's no, there's no injury, there's no injury update here on him. No, yeah, that's my point. As long as, as, as he's healthy, healthy, we're good. These are all this is all weeks ago. So yeah, give me uh, yeah, I like the over. You, you like you like you like the Bengals? Yes, sir. Okay, and I believe this is the last buy of the of the year, buy week of the year. Um, and they got six teams. By the way, why the hell did they put put buys this late in the year? Especially with fantasy football being, you know, close to playoff time too. Really, really strange. Ravens, Bills, uh, Ravens, Bills, Bears, Raiders, Vikings, and Giants all on buys this week. Of these six teams, Zachary, who needs to buy the most? I want to say the Ravens. Ooh, interesting. Why? They they're just always injured. They need some health. They always need time to rehab, and to have a a week this late into the season when you're when you're trying to gun for for the one seed. I I think I think it's important. I'm gonna go with a tie here. I think both the Bills and the Vikings need it bad. The Bills need a reset. Kind of you know they almost won that game against uh, Philadelphia. That's that's a heartbreaking loss last week. And to me, the, the to me they're the best team of the wild card teams outside the the on the outside looking in when they, when they decide to play well and and be focused. The biggest upside, and their schedule is still pretty tough. I mean, they still got to play Kansas City after next week. So, um, but the Vikings too. Also, I mean, remember a couple weeks ago, Josh Dobbs. Oh my God, great kid, obviously, but then lose two in a row, and then the way they lost to Chicago on Monday Night Football, they need a they need a reset. Hey, I I look at it as a team that got hot for a short amount of time mm-hmm. and it's fallen back to where they were. Well, they were on three. Then it went to seven. Was it six and four? Whatever it was, six and three. Whatever the hell it was. And then, uh, yeah, too bad. Okay, before we get to, we're gonna, we're gonna add to the best bets this week. Before we get to those picks, here's the updated rankings. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on the screen real quick. We use what well, you guys watch on YouTube. Um, there's your updated uh playoff rankings that was, that was released last night. Of course, Georgia one, Michigan two, Washington three, four, C four, uh, Oregon five, Ohio State six, Texas seven, Alabama eight. And I say those eight teams because I believe those are the eight teams that really have a chance of getting the playoff if things do shake out. 
Do you have any problem with this this uh, order, uh, Zach? No, I think the order is perfect right now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you. Um, I can make an argument for Michigan being ahead of Georgia. No, uh, Georgia, yeah, because of that win last, this last past week. I can make, I'm going to say I'm going to make the argument. I'm going to say that you make, make the argument. You know? Yeah, but, uh, I, I couldn't because Ohio State's only big victory is what, against Notre, Notre Dame, Dame, and it was a close game? And Penn State. It was all right as hell. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, which now we we get to FSU minute here real quick. Um, obviously we 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 win a close one against Florida. That got a little scary early in the game, down twelve nothing. They settled down. Defense took over the game. Florida's really bad this year. I do love more than else that because we we hate the Gators so much that not only do we win the game to go thir- to go twelve and zero, we also prevent them from being a bowl team. Yeah, now, that's yeah. fun. That's fun to for me. You know, so that was fun for me to, to you know to go through that. That was that was awesome. Um, sorry, Gator fans. Sorry, not sorry, should I say? Um, that being said, this game is Louisville scares me because Louisville is so. What's that word? Dangerous. They're dangerous. They, they are like the, the, they're a high octane offense, so they could put up twenty one points in three minutes on us, and the game could be out of reach. And Florida's margin of error, Florida's margin of error is zero. They lose one game, they're done. There's no consideration whatsoever. Okay, because Texas will get in, Oregon get in, anybody, any of those teams will get in before Alabama will get in before before they, before Florida State does. In fact, I'll go ahead and say this too. Also, as much as I love the Florida State Seminoles, look, if they win this game, they deserve to get in the top in, in the playoff four. They deserve it. But are they one of the four best teams in college football? They're not. Well. No, no. They, they, if they were to lose, they're not one of the top, top four. And yes, it'll be because of an injury, but that's part of it. Yeah, that's what happens, and that's why the, the entire season has to matter. Yeah, but they have to, they have beaten, especially they have, they, have, they have to go and beaten. They can't, they can't afford any, any uh, wiggle room here. Yeah, the only one who really s- survives out of this would be like. Ohio State and Texas. What do you mean? Well, I mean, if Alabama, Georgia's playing, Georgia's playing Alabama, correct? Correct. Yeah, when they be, when Georgia beats Alabama, they'll have two losses. There's no way they're jumping ahead of a one loss team. No, hell no. Then you have Washington against Oregon. Washington's going to beat Oregon for a second time. You, wait, oh, really? Oh, save save that for the picks. Uh, that's what I'm saying. There's only a couple of teams that can move up, but they deserve to move up. I'm afraid, though, Zach, that there's a scenario where even if Florida State wins against Louisville in a, say, a semi-close game, and then Wash- Oregon beats Washington, okay, but that game is competitive, and the committee decides to put in both Pac-12 teams in there. Yeah, that that would be the one scary, one scary thing, but... I don't think they could take a team who is from a Power 5 conference, wins their conference, goes undefeated, beats another top 10 team in the country. So, And I think also, too, also with that as well, is that if that – the reason that, that won't happen also, too, is that if anything, Texas may have the better advantage of getting in in this scenario, in another scenario where let's say Texas wins in a blowout. Florida State loses, Oregon, Oregon wins, Texas because of having a you know a, a, you know a, a power five conference title will probably leapfrog yeah. Washington. I mean, this is why if you're a Florida State fan, do your job, do your job. You're you're, you're pretty much it. Uh, I think the only team, I think the only, I think the only team that could have one loss and it's a virtual guarantee to get in the playoff is Georgia. That is it. I don't even think Michigan has that because if Michigan loses to Iowa of all teams, they're fucked. Well, either way, as long as Florida State wins, they're in. Yeah, there's no way they're coming out of the top four if right. they win. But I, and I say that as, as a Knowles fan, though they're in, but it wouldn't be the right, correct. When I say correct, I mean it's a it's a correct by virtue of the records and all that. But in terms of the product, 
Why not? They did this with Cardell Jones and Ohio sure. State. Yeah, but you, but I mean, so you, there's you, total do you believe, precedent. Do you believe Rotomaker? Do you believe him to do to do it again this week? I didn't believe in Cardell Jones back then. Fair point. So let's get to the pick real quick. Um, the best bet for this game, FSU Louisville. Uh, FSU two and a half point favorites over under forty seven and a half. I'm gonna go under because I'm a little bitch. What you got? Well, I'm gonna be the man between us and take Louisville. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. You wait. wait you pick Louisville in the game? Yes. Oh my god! Why? Well, I don't have confidence in the quarterback. Okay. So you're you're being a bitch, and, and I I would have thought. Even if Jordan Travis were playing, I don't think the spread would have been more than four and a half, five. And would you still take Florida State though? If, if he played? No. Oh. Louisville is a dangerous, dangerous team. Maybe I will always have PTSD from what Lamar Jackson did to us. Yeah. All right. It was so bad. Remember that game? He he hung up sixty and seventy points on us. It it, it was terrible. Yeah. So you see, you're making my point then. Florida State, like head to head, FSU versus Georgia. You take Georgia. FSU Michigan. You take Michigan. FSU against Washington well, or no. Oregon. I I look at Georgia's offense different than the way in which I look at Michigan's offense, or I look at Georgia's offense. Now, do I think both of those teams are more complete than Louisville? Yeah, yeah. but Louisville's got a very dangerous offense. Mm. All right. All right, so then in that case, let's get to the picks then. Oregon versus Washington, Pac-12 championship. This line opened at 7.5, minus 7.5 for Oregon on Saturday, okay? I'm not surprised they were the favorites. I thought it was high as it, as it was. Then this line ballooned to 9.5 on Sunday. And Zach, now the line's at 10. Yeah. 10 point Oregon, 10, Oregon's a 10-point favorite over under 6, six points. Mind you, folks, this is the podcast. Washington already beat Oregon once this year. Yeah, it makes me ask, did someone get hurt that I don't know that's about? What I, that's, that's what I'm saying. But I think what it is also is Washington's look, look kind of shaky this couple weeks. Granted, it's the gauntlet of the team they play through also, too. The biggest thing schedule in, in all college football. But Cobb also with Oregon also playing phenomenal football. They are arguably the best team in college football right now. Arguably. I agree. And that's why, for me, I think what I I just believe Washington will be will win outright in this game, though. I'll take Washington points. I got Oregon win this game. I think Washington points. I think Washington sees disrespect, and I think they'll they'll take that to heart. Yeah, and for me, this is what is that? Michael Penix Jr. How do yeah. you pronounce it? I believe this is his chance to show. Hey, it's not Kalen Williams who should be going number one. It should be me. I'll say this. This game decides the Heisman. Absolutely. These, these, these are the two guys here, Penix Jr. and, and Nick. Oh, these Nick. are the two guys. Yeah. So the winner of this game was the Heisman also, too. So I got Washington, too. I got Washington on the points. I think Oregon still wins the game. But I think Washington keeps the game close. Yeah, I'll take Washington with the points for us. Okay. Um. <coughs> big, big 12 title. Texas against Oklahoma State. Uh, Texas 59 point favorites over under 54 and a half. This is easy. Texas covers this game easy. Next. Come on. Yeah. Oklahoma State has looked really bad lately. Dude, they lost the UCF. What, was it 45 to 3 last week? Some shit? Yeah. So give me Texas. Yeah. All right. SEC title game. Uh, Georgia versus Alabama. Georgia six point favorites over under 54 and a half. I'm thinking Georgia covered this game. I agree. I think. Sorry, roll tide, but Georgia's gonna roll. Yeah, they should have lost last week, man. Alabama should have lost last week. That 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 Mildred throw four thirty one, so sick. Auburn's so bad, dude. Good God, how do you allow that to happen like that? That little little win like that. Wow. Well. It's what happens when you return a uh, missed field goal to win an Iron Bowl. Yeah, so the ten anniversary of that, right? Mm-hmm. And finally, uh, the Big Ten title game. Michigan against Iowa. Check this out, Zach. Michigan is 22 and a half point favorites, right? Over under 35. What, what, what Vegas is telling you is that Iowa ain't going to score any points in this game. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
and I, I would believe it, but I don't know if Michigan's going to score 24 points. I'm taking the over in this game. Damn. I think Michigan will score at least 34 points, at least 34 points. So I look at three, so you get this 37 there. Boom. Well, I, I think Michigan has a letdown the first half the first half of the game com, coming off the victory Ooh. from Ohio State. Oh, man. If I were betting, I'd bet the under first half. I'd bet, I'd find out what Michigan point total was and bet the under on that for first half. I I'm taking I'm taking Iowa plus points. Holy shit. I like that. Ballsy, buddy. So enjoy college football, folks. And this is the only week we're doing uh adding the best bets to, totals to our uh college football to our best bet week weekly. So all right. One last thing we got here. Um again, this is a topic we had you had said you brought up uh a couple days ago. We want you want to discuss on the podcast. We'll do it now. Um, JD Reddick, of course, on his podcast, the uh, Old Man in Three. I love that podcast on the record. He had Tim Legler and Richard Jefferson on the show, and they were discussing um, which players you can see current players just, you can see taking a leap in the top fifteen category all time players. Not just like top fifteen today, but top fifteen all time um, players. Obviously, I, I would assume that would that would do, require a ring involved. I would I would assume, but whatever. Um, and to me, it, the conversation is really it's only two guys really. I, I I can see that really has that has that um um opportunity to do that. Um, I guess maybe no, no I was gonna say the third guy, but he's not gonna do it. Um, to me, it's just Jokic and and Giannis, the only two guys I can think of really that that, that are still outside of fifteen. But are close enough so, to where? So you do believe Durant is top fifteen? Then I, I knew you were gonna say that because because Durant for you is outside fifteen. He is he's like number thirteen for me, twelve or thirteen. Yeah, so he's right in there. All right. So that's the thing. I know you have KD as that as, as that guy in the list. Yeah, I mean, we went through the list. I, I think he's like seventeenth, eighteenth. I think he he's the one guy. Actually, I believe it's him and Jokic. I, I right now I don't even know if Giannis with one more ring has a chance to get into top fifteen. Really? Yeah. Why? Just because the way in which we view Jokic's abilities versus the things Giannis can't do. So we think of Giannis as like the Greek freak, you know. He can take three steps from the three point line and and pretty much dunk, right? But he can't shoot, right? And he's not a guy who would you would have him put the ball on, on the court and and hand hand off facilitate for others. Like he he gets assists, but it's like pass offs when he's getting double teamed. But is, it, but is that a kind of amazing? He, he can do that with, with a limited skill set and do what he does. Be a two time MVP, a world a world champion, also too, on top of that. Yeah, but I think because of that, for him, it might take three rings to get top mm. fifteen. Mm. Whereas I think Jokic, if he just gets one more ring, with the way in which he he controls the entire offense on the team, I think he'd move top fifteen. I can see the argument on that one. Um, let me throw you th- throw you this here: one of Giannis wins a th- wins MVP this year, and wins a title. That's three MVPs, two titles. Now against like a, Le- a LeBron scenario now, where you're you're now LeBron circa 2012 13, where we were already considered LeBron top ten player at, at that point, maybe in top five. Yeah, I I might then I might, but it does take a lot of the hardware to do that. Like you're saying, stacking a deck, like he needs three rings. But if he gets, he gets a second ring with, a, with MVP, where I say Jokic is winning MVP, but it wins a second ring. But can you see him winning MVP, having Lillard there as a, as a sidekick? He would need for them to do that. He would need to win like sixty uh, north of sixty five games to do that. For to be, it has to be a, a situation where he's winning a, a shit ton of games to where it's, it's almost like hard to ignore. And yeah, not, and I know always close. And not only that. We're only a month into the year, and Giannis is even in my conversation top five right now in terms of uh, uh MVP candidates right now. I, I did this podcast with my with my with uh, Greg Arenio yesterday on the show, and we ran down 
top five contenders, and Giannis was not one of those guys we mentioned. I, I mentioned SGA in the order. SGA, Jokic, KD right now, who's my leader right now, of MVP, if I have a vote right now, because he's doing this up with Bradley, uh, Bradley Beal and Booker on, in on the lineup. Luka. And then the fifth guy, I think, was... um. Who was it? It was KD. Oh, Embiid. Embiid. Maybe I'm. I'm just now that now that Harden's gone and Maxi's out there all the time. He looks so impressive to me. Embiid. Ma- no, Maxi playing. Oh, of course. Plant, plant. So, but no, I can see that. I, I I totally understand those as your top five. I mean. Giannis is top 10, I definitely. I'll put him in top 10, but there's, there's so many guys right now you can consider in that top 7, 8, yeah. 9. Because, well, I mean, SGA and Luka, you didn't expect their teams to be winning at the rate they are. Right. So right there, they're in. Right. So Milwaukee Anthony have to Edwards, go. I'm shocked you didn't have him in there. With the He's way top 10. Went. He's top 10. He's top 10. Probably number 6 or 7. Yeah, it, It's hard with this early in the season to do it. Right. I think once we once we get to like January, February, we'll have a better framework. I think Giannis has, has so much time, but I think Giannis needs a um, Giannis needs a massive season of wins to separate himself. That separates himself with the pack, because a lot of teams are now are playing on level with him right now in terms of like record. That it's, it gets lost in a shuffle. So but, I have another question for go you. Go ahead. Go ahead. So we've talked top fifteen. Right. Is there a young player that you could envision being top 20, top 25 overall? All time? All time. Going to next year? Yeah. Just, just in which the way their, their career is already gone, the way in which you personally believe their, their career might go. Is there anyone out there you think could? Does Luca count? The young, is young player still? Oh, Luka? yeah. Then Luke will be the guy because if Luke, okay. if Luke gets a ring, one ring, that changes a lot. Luca's one. Who's another guy that's young? Could Tatum? No, still- I, I don't. I see. I don't view Tatum as that. Tatum's a really good player, but I don't view him as a top fifty player yet, all time. No, but if he wins a ring. When 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 when's finals MVP? Does that change your view? No, he will still be he will still, he will be top twenty five for me yet all time because he has a much better team around him. No, not all time. Just from that one ring, I'm saying, does that help project him for you? He may start on a path again there, but it wouldn't be next year. Okay. What's about next year? Like, if Luca wins, let's say Luca wins MVP this year. Okay, he's in the conversation right now. And then Luca and the Mavericks win a title this year. Luca's already in my top twenty-five all time. Wow. Okay. That's what, I'm, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. He's already in that class already. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Tatum could do that this year. It wouldn't matter. Tatum doesn't. Tatum wouldn't get that that rub because Tatum has a better team around him for starters. I mean, what about, what about players that that can crack that really? And B maybe the little guy you can consider. Talent level wise, one of the most talented centers in the history of basketball. Yeah, but oh, he's yeah. he's on what season nine, season ten already. So define young. I, I don't I don't know if him winning a ring, he could win another MVP and win one ring. I don't know if I could envision him being a top twenty five player. Define young though. Think of all the players we're moving in this list down the order, mm-hmm. as say, Jokic, Giannis, Durant move up. Guys are coming down. How many? How many guys can you envision just falling out of the top 2025? Well, define the first off, define young for the starters. Is young 25 or under, 30 and under? What, what, what's the what's the demarcation for young? How, 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 many, say, how many seasons? I guess really one thing else. I would say no more than on his second contract and has not won a ring. Well, that's that's a little so different. eight years or less. Eight years or less in the NBA, and has not won a ring. Okay, so Joel Embiid. Let me ask because he's right on that on that on that edge right there. Because he came in in 20, 2016, but he didn't play till like the, thir- the third year. Remember? Yeah. But you, because I can I figure guys are playing till they're thirty five, thirty six. So if you go eight years in, 
and they haven't won a ring, can you still envision them having any chance? So Joel Embiid is 29 years old. Okay. Um, let me see how many seasons he's played basketball. I swore he came to the league 2015, 2016. No, I think he's played eight seasons, been in the league nine. Right. That's right on the cusp. And then um, you figure for his size and his health issues already, is he really going to yeah, make he, it to 35? So he got drafted in 2014. Okay. Um, but he didn't play a full year until I think 20, a full ish year until I think this third year, right? Something like that. 2016. Yeah, he's a little older at this point now. I I, I don't know if I count. If, if he does it this year, I guess. He, he Yeah, he's got to have a, a real quick three, four year run or he's completely lost. So let's say Joel Embiid. Let's say Joel Embiid actually um, wins MVP this year. Yeah. Again, that's back to back years MVP. And then the title. I There's think a, that puts him top 75. Puts him top 50, I think. Because you, you no, put no, him top fifty. I put him top fifty. I have no problem with that. That's okay. two MVPs, two MVPs back to back, and one or won a title with a guy like James Harden who, after he lost the same that guy, that guy the same year for context, of course. I don't know if I'll give him twenty five love yet, but he he'd be beyond fifty. I think he'd be like closer to almost a thirty. I think wow. honestly, he'd be he'd be from twenty five. Be honest with you. Well, the guys are in that conversation. So you're really ready to kick out the guys who never want to ring. At some point, you have to. Well, well, the MVPs help too. Also, if you're stacking with MVPs on top of everything else too, this is what this is what this is why Jokic and Giannis are two guys that they already have two. So like Barkley, Malone, Stockton, those guys are just falling way down your list. They may have to. They they will naturally because the one that that behind the MVPs already on top of not having any rings. Yeah, you know okay. what I'm saying. So I mean, well, the young guys start to beat. I mean, he's not considered a young guy anyway. No. Um, that's it, really. Not AD. AD is even if you want to ring. He he has a ring already, but as the second best player on the team. So no, that's it, really. Yeah, I, th- I think that's it. I mean, I don't know. I I, I can't think of anybody else that is in that Does conversation. Does that kind of scare you for the future? It's almost like a cliff. You're gonna have two guys that are gonna be really the face of the future, and well, and I mean, you still got, and Giannis. Well, you, you, I don't know. You, you still, maybe we say this all the time, but then like we always get these players to come out of nowhere. We say that, but then Paulo Banchero yeah. could be a fucking phenomenal star in in two or three years. If, if this Orlando team is, and by the way, Kyle has texted me from the game. He goes, uh. Franz Wagner is good at basketball. For the record, <laughs> he sent me a text like we already, already recorded this. Um, we say that, but there, there are always players that jump out of nowhere. Yeah, look, I mean, look at Wemby. That's another guy also too in five years that can be considered a all-time great. Because I, I, I think Chet, Wemby, Chet or Chet, SGA, Chet's good. The, Chet's good. The way in which they could play together, they could both pr- push each other into. High high ranking. The only th- the only thing that hurts SGA at this point now is that lack of TV time because a lot of people don't know who he is because OKC is on TV enough on mainstream TV enough. And unless OKC is taking deep runs of the playoffs, a lot of folks don't know who the hell he is. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't know what he looks like. I'll be honest. I do now. <laughs> no, well, we're, we're also junkies though, so I get. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of other players that could be there. Yeah. You, you know, you know, what guys would have been there if he stayed healthy. Zion could have been there if he stayed healthy, but he's not healthy. Um. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a cliff. You're right. It's a cliff. Uh, this is gonna be really terrible. I don't know if I could recognize almost any star unless it was an NBA star out of uniform, and that's only purely by height. Oh, really? Because you're so used to just seeing them in a jersey, and you see that look. It's like Clark Kent with just glasses on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have a list of if we get, if we get out of here. I, I, here's a list of players um, that I consider top 25 players right now. Okay. Um, so, guys that I did not mention yet. Um, any age, top 25. Uh, Dunn Booker, all time? No, right? No. No. Um, Dame, Dame Lillard? No. No, he's way gone. Yeah, I mean, he's Booker like... would have a chance. 
game has no chance. Kawhi would have been if he was healthier, but no. No, his injury is taking him backwards. By the way, I think you're covering up your mic real quick. Can you really hear you? There you go. There you go. Um, that's it, dude. <laughs> the list is that's it. Don Mitchell, no. Jalen Brown, no. The no. Fox, no. No, no. Yeah. Anthony, Anthony Edwards, keep an eye on that one going forward, though. Um, because his his upside is pretty fucking good. Yeah. Um, Zion would have been a possibility have he stayed healthy. Dude, that's it. That's it. Gene Butler, no. Much I love him. Yeah, that's it. Hey, and the NBA needs these young stars to really kick it into gear soon. Yeah, and, and they will. Like I said, Franz Wagner. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Jalen sucks. Put down a dunk, man. He put down. Let's a go, dunk Magic, baby. Tonight. Yep. All right. Follow Zach on Twitter at FSU Know It All. As he left, whoa, he jumped out of the jumped out of the <laughs> jumped out of there. <laughs> oh my lord! Let me see and get back in here real quick. Hold on, let me get back in real quick. Yeah, I think his phone died. So, again, follow Zach on Twitter at FSU Know It All. Um, or Twitter X, what do you call it? And uh, till the next one later. <laughs>